Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. So a few months back I made a guide um, showing how to solo the Whisper of the Worm mission. Now on that video you guys commented and said that you wanted the same type of video for Zero Hour. Um, I've been waiting to do that until I kind of ran out of other video ideas and we hit that point so now is the time. Um, but this one's going to be a little different from the last one because for this one for whatever reason since the recent update that we got in Destiny 2, Zero Hour and Whisper are both kind of broken. And when I say kind of broken, what I mean is you can absolutely shit on all the enemies with pretty much any weapon. Like match game doesn't matter anymore, shield types don't matter anymore, whether they're orange bars, whether they're red bars, even the bosses at the end of these missions just get shit on. I, sh I swear to you, I killed all three of the Whisper of the Worm missions with the fucking better devils. Now look, I don't know why this is, but it is most definitely a bug, and I cannot imagine that Bungie does not patch this at some point. So if you need Whisper of the Worm, if you need Outbreak Perfected, this is your opportunity, friends. Make sure that you jump in and you get this before they patch it. Because like I said, like there's no way that this is intended to be happening. Basically what it is, is all of our outgoing damage, all the damage that I'm doing with my weapons, my super, all that stuff, it is magnified by about times six, what it should be. So every time I'm shooting the scout rifle, you can see that I'm bodying these enemies for like 4,000 damage, when it should be something like 400, give or take. So like 10 times damage, actually, damn, that is insane. But uh, yeah. Because of that, because you're doing so much damage, things like match game don't matter anymore. Things like the fact that these guys are orange bars don't matter anymore. I killed the boss with this Oxygen SR3, and the Oxygen SR3 is not a good weapon. The loadout that I'm using in this video is a Better Devil's Hand Cannon, an Oxygen SR3, and a 21% Delirium Machine Gun, and the exotic that I'm using is the new one for Titans that makes you shoot through your rally barricade, I think. But that's it! Like, I'm not using any mods, I'm not using, you know, any kind of crazy loadouts or anything like that. Like, that's it. I'm using a bare-bones loadout. Another time that I soloed this, the first time that I did it before recording this video, I soloed this entire mission with a Buzzard and an Oxygen SR4, and I, that's all I used. And I finished with, um, like, a minute 30 left on the clock, something like that. With the Better Devils and using the 21% Delirium, I finished with, like, four and a half on the clock. But... Man, like, your your loadout does not matter in this. I cannot stress that enough. You use any weapon, whether it's kinetic, whether it's energy, whether it's a power weapon, it does not matter. I would recommend running a machine gun. That's the only weapon that I would say you probably absolutely want, just because there's big clusters of ads, and it is nice to just go ahead and mow them down. It's also really nice to have the machine gun for the tanks, because you can just absolutely destroy the tanks really quickly. But aside from that, I would recommend having at least one ranged weapon, like my Oxygen SR3. I think I called it an SR4 earlier. I honestly don't remember what it's called. The Oxygen. I'm just going to call it the Oxygen. But I would recommend having at least one ranged weapon in your loadout, uh, because these enemies do still hurt you like they always have. Your outgoing damage is increased in this mission now, but your incoming damage is the same. These guys will hurt you. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is also happening in the heroic version of the Zero Hour mission, but for some reason it doesn't seem to be happening in the heroic version of the Whisper mission. I don't know. Uh, that, that's, that right there is what leads me to believe that this is a bug, because it's in three out of the four. If it was something that they intended to do, it would be in all four of them. But anyway, back to Zero Hour. If you've never done it, go ahead and follow the path that I'm on now. The main thing that you need to keep in mind is kill everything. And with this bug, that is not a challenge. Believe me. The only two challenges really left in these missions is one, the 20 minute countdown timer. You do have to be quick in these if you want to get those exotics. And two is the fact that you can still die. Like, you can die, you know, 10, 15 times and be fine as long as you're fast enough through the jumping puzzles and all that. Um, the first run that I tried to solo this, like back in the day, I, I died so many times, like probably at least 20, and I still finished with maybe five or six seconds left on the clock, like I barely got it. But you know, the point is, is if you're fast enough through the jumping puzzles, if you're fast enough through Trevor and all that stuff, that is when you are going to make up the time where if you do die a lot, 
it's not going to hurt you. The jumping puzzle in these missions is what gets a lot of people. That's that's where a lot of people fail it. I think I go through the jumping puzzle here in the normal version of the Zero Hour mission in about six minutes, which is a very good time. Uh, but honestly, if it takes you ten minutes, you know, you're good. As long as it didn't take you too long to get through the first section of enemies and you can melt all the enemies in the final room quick enough. So, ten minutes for enemies, ten minutes for jumping puzzle, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the commentary now. I will talk to you guys when I get to Trevor because there is a trick for soloing Trevor that I will share with you guys. But for now, I'm just going to show you the path through the jumping puzzle. Talk to you guys soon. Guess who's back? Did you miss me? I missed you. So Trevor is another part that a lot of people struggle with solo, but luckily for you, I'm here to tell you that Trevor follows a set path. You will have this exact version of Trevor, and he will do this exact same thing when you get here that he's doing in my room. So if you follow the exact path that I'm on now, you will never run into Trevor because he is programmed to go through this maze a certain way and make certain turns at a certain time. And if you follow the path that I'm on, you will never ever cross him. So the way that I do this is I go to the front right one first, as you can see. I come over here, I wait for the stupid ass door to go down, the arc energy. As soon as I come out of here, there's a big open section right here in the middle where you can pass between the two levels. I just hop on this pipe and I wait because I know Trevor is about to make a pass by because he's made one full lap since I dropped down. Once he goes by, then I go ahead and go to the back lever on the right. I pull it and then I turn around and I go right back to that same middle section that I was just waiting in before. So now that both of the levers have been pulled on the right side, I just need to get the two on the left. So I come over here, Trevor's making another lap, he will do this exact path, I promise you, if you do it exactly like I do. I first go to my left so that I can go get the front left lever. Once I pull it, then I just need to run straight to the other lever. This is the back left lever on this side, and I pull it. Trevor's just going to casually stroll on by because he's programmed to do so. And then I just go ahead and run to the door. I promise you guys, if you do it exactly like I'm doing and you don't wait, you just keep sprinting and grab those levers, you will never have to worry about Trevor. Like, that's it. It's done. Right there, all four levers have been pulled, the door is open, I can go on through, and Trevor is just going on about his business, doesn't need to bother me at all. I'll talk to you guys when we get to the boss.
So once we get to the boss, it's time to time to finish this thing, man. If you've made it this far, you still got enough time on the clock, I would say you want at least five or six minutes here, then you're good to go, man. What I like to do is I like to drop down and prioritize the enemies on the right. I go ahead and get rid of the vandals. There's always a dreg right there on that box. And I get rid of this turret on the right because they will just absolutely melt you if you don't get rid of them. Plus, the way that I handle the tanks whenever they drop in, I can't handle the tanks the way that I do it if I don't get rid of these turrets uh, before I start dealing with the tanks. So, yeah, I get rid of the right turret, and then after that, I just start picking off some of these little enemies. Might do a little bit of damage to the boss just to get him to move around, but for the most part, I'm keeping my distance, and I'm making sure that I always have something between me and the enemies. Once the boss has enough damage dealt to him, it's um, about 25% of his health, give or take, then he will spawn the servitor, as you can see. Because of this bug, that servitor is nothing. The boss is nothing. None of this is anything anymore. It really is. Like, you can just melt these enemies. Just make sure that you're staying behind cover because they can melt you too. So, I think that, actually, that makes sense. It might be, that might be the bug. Is that you're doing the damage that they do to you. That would actually explain a lot. But anyway, once I clear out the right side, the servitor's gone in the middle. The boss is hanging out over there on that left platform. I'm going to go ahead and take out all the rest of these snipers and deal with this other turret on the left side. There are two of them. Make sure that you get rid of them because, like I said, they will melt you. After that, I take out these shanks, and then I can go ahead and tag the boss a few times. A little bit more damage to the boss, and he's going to spawn another servitor in the back of the room. We're just going to make a big circle here. So he's moved back there, servitor spawned. Take the servitor out from a distance. You got a scout rifle, you got a pulse rifle, some kind of ranged weapon. This is another reason that I said you wanted something ranged, is because it's easy mode. With this extra damage that you do, it is honestly easy mode. You can just hang back and pick these dudes off. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Like, I don't I don't even remember if I used my super in here. I didn't I don't think I even needed it. But yeah, I mean, two bosses down. I haven't really taken any damage, you know? I'm using a scout rifle, which is something that you don't do in Destiny, because scout rifles aren't that great, at least not in the in-game stuff. But yeah, just make sure that you're cleaning up all your ads. And um, the last thing is once you do a little bit more damage to the boss, he's currently on the right side of the room over there with some shanks. Once you damage him a little bit more, he is going to teleport back to the main area that he was in when you first dropped down. And when he does that, he is going to spawn two walker tanks on either side. This is going to be another really good reason for you to have the machine gun, as you will see right now. What I like to do is so that I'm not out in the open and exposed, I get my back up against the wall here so that I can deal with one of these tanks at a time. You can see the boss is shooting at me and the other tank across the room is shooting at me, but the tank that I'm at is blocking those shots so I don't have to worry about it. I'll do the same thing again. I'll kill these shanks and then I will go to the opposite side of the room on the left and do the exact same thing to that tank that I just did, and then it's just a matter of cleaning up the remaining few adds. There are a few invisible vandals in this room that need to die. Everything in this room needs to die. And these guys will hide. I've had a couple of runs in the past where we thought everything was dead and there was one of these vandals hiding somewhere and we couldn't find him. So we had to go run around until, you know, he swiped at us and then we could see him on the radar. But yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this boss with a scout rifle from distance with an oxygen because that's a thing that you do. Then I'm going to go over there and take out that tank, clean up a few more ads, and I'm done. I just soloed the zero hour mission and I don't think I even died in this video so there you have it guys best of luck to you I'm gonna go ahead and add something to this video I'm gonna add the jumping puzzle to the whisper mission in case you need a guide for that so after I kill this after I kill the tank then it's gonna start the jumping puzzle of the whisper mission if you need that one too thank you guys so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it click like if you're new to the channel click subscribe and if you're already subscribed I fucking love you take care guys